Hello, I'm Dr. Donna Pelto, and welcome to the Worcester Senior Center Walking Club kickoff. I want to thank you for inviting me here to do this little talk on walking tips and tricks. And I want to thank you for this wonderful shirt that you gave me. I'm not going to keep this on during the whole time. I'm going to put on something a little bit more professional. But I hope for all those that are watching, you're going to be able to use these tips. And I really want you to get out there and do a lot of walking. But make sure you listen to this next portion because I want to avoid any type of foot problems or injuries that you may have. Okay, once again, I hope you enjoy this next segment. Hello, I'm Dr. Donald Pelto, and welcome to the Worcester Senior Center. This is gonna be the walking kickoff for the walking club here in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I've been asked to do some tips and tricks to walking more appropriately to help avoid injury at this time. Because we know many people that are watching here, those that are seniors, they've been in their house and it's starting to become spring here and you're wanting to get out and get more active. And I wanna make sure you have everything that you need to be safe and to be healthy as you're going about your walking. Okay, so we're gonna start looking here at shoe selection. Now many of you that have shoes, you think that I can wear any shoe when I'm out there walking. But one of the main problems I find is that people that have shoes, you're wearing shoes that are really old. And I know, my, if you buy one shoe, it's not good for 20 or 30 years. If the shoe is too worn, and one way to, to determine that is when you look at the bottom of the shoe, if there's these little lines in the cushioning material, you're gonna see that it's too old. So shoes do tend to wear out, and I think the, the companies actually make them that way. And it's not like how it used to be, where it lasted you a long time. Uh, athletic shoes, especially like a walking shoe or a running shoe, it tends to wear out after about a year or two. So if you are uh, defined on getting more active and walking more, it may be a good idea for you to get shoes. But you may be asking, how am I gonna get shoes at this time? Well, there's a lot of really good websites you can go to to find shoes, to find shoes that are the right size. They can be ordered, they can be delivered. You can ask your loved ones to help you with that. Uh, what types of shoes? Well, at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna give you kind of a shoe buying recommendation. Not specific shoes, but different types that you can use that are gonna be good for you. So the first thing, you have to make sure you have a, a proper shoe. And exactly what type of shoe do I recommend? Well, I recommend a shoe that isn't too flexible and it's more rigid and more stable. That type of shoe is gonna give you stability when you're walking to help you avoid spraining your ankle, to give you support from the impact when you're walking outside. Another thing you have to make sure is that the shoe is gonna be wide enough for you. The biggest problem I find uh, being a podiatrist and seeing a lot of older patients is that their shoes are too narrow. And you might say, well, but my shoes feel comfortable. Well, just because it's comfortable doesn't mean that it's wide enough. And you, you might not know how to tell if it's wide enough. Well, I'm gonna show you, there's this picture here on, on this slide, and you can see that this person is actually tracing out their foot on a piece of paper. And, and what you can do is you can trace your foot, step on a piece of paper, trace it out, and then put the shoe on top and to see if it's wide enough. Another thing that you can do is you can actually take the, the portion of the shoe, it's called the sock liner. For those that don't know what the sock liner is, basically it's the part that's in the shoe that has the name of the shoe written on it. So depending on the brand name, you're gonna see the brand name there. You can pull out that liner in most shoes and you put that on the ground and then you stand on top of it. If any part of your foot goes over the sides. What are the biggest reasons? Well, the biggest reasons are, are bunions and tailor's bunions. Those are those bumps on the big toe and the, and the little toe that kind of go out, and that makes the shoe too narrow. There are some new shoes out there that are, that are wide enough. Well, what's the problem? Well, if, it, if the shoe's too narrow, it could cause rubbing, it could cause blistering, especially if you're doing a lot of walking. Another thing that I find about shoe selection is you, you want to make sure your shoe has laces if you're going to do a lot of walking. I find a lot of people, they tend to wear a shoe that's a slip-on. And a slip-on might be okay at home. It might be okay just kind of with your slippers at home. But going out and doing a lot of walking with a slip-on shoe, it can slip off your foot and cause a problem. And it's not as secure and stable. So the, the two best types of shoes are shoes that have laces, or if you can't do laces, shoes that have Velcro. And just a quick tip, there are some laces now, they're called stretch laces. And these are actually laces that you, you can pull and, and stretch out the shoe, put the shoe on without even untying the shoe. So it works very well. 
So those are some good tips for shoe selection, making sure your shoe is wide enough, making sure it's new enough, and making sure it, it has all the right components to it for when you're, when you're out there doing your walking. The next thing I want to look at is I want to talk about sock selection. You might think, well, I can wear any sock that I want. Well, you can, but there are certain types of socks that are more appropriate. If you're doing a lot of walking, if you're in the walking club and, and, and starting to walk, let's say, two or three blocks, then going up to a mile, then going up to two miles, socks are actually important because if you have a, a pro, an improper sock, it can cause blistering, it can cause rubbing, it can get bunched up in your sock, uh, I'm sorry, bunched up in your shoe and cause problems. I want to tell you a quick story. There was a, a patient of mine and he actually had diabetes and so he, he had uh, high blood sugar and he also had something called neuropathy. And one day he was going out to play golf and he liked to play golf every single day, just like you might like to go for a walk. And, and one day he came back from his golfing game and he ended up having a lot of blood on his sock. And he wasn't sure why, he couldn't feel anything. And he ended up having a lot of problems because of that. Now, do you know why that happened to him? Well, this patient, he had diabetes, but he also had a condition called uh, peripheral neuropathy. Do you know what that is? Peripheral neuropathy are, are the nerves that are furthest from your spinal cord. Okay, they're on the periphery of your body, far away. And it tends to affect your hands and your feet. And specifically what happens is you lose the sensation. So this gentleman, he didn't have any feeling in his feet or in his toes. And that's very common actually for people that have diabetes and other health conditions. If you have it, you're going to know, okay? You don't have to be worried about getting it. It's something that you know that you have it. That's why you usually see your primary care, your endocrinologist, or your podiatrist to check that. There's a little test you can take, a little piece of plastic, and poke on different parts of the foot to tell if you have neuropathy or not. But this patient, he actually had this neuropathy, and he liked to golf every day. Well, what happened is one day, he went golfing, and after he finished golfing, he actually took his socks, and instead of kind of putting them into the, the washer, what he did is he just kind of put them in the, in the front of the shoes, because maybe he was going to wear them later. And he, and he put them in the front of the shoes, and then the next day came around that he was going to play golf, and you can guess what happened. He didn't know, he didn't check inside of his shoes before he played golf, and he ended up shoving his feet in with that sock that was already, already in the front of the shoe. And that caused a problem. That caused a blister and caused a lot of other issues. So I'm, I'm saying certainly socks are, are really important, but as well, every time you, you walk, you should take off, wash those socks, get a fresh pair. And there's a couple of types of uh, socks that really work well. They're called dry wick away socks. Now, if you're like me, you're probably brought up saying everyone has to wear either cotton or wool socks. That's what everyone says, cotton or wool. But what we find is with the new technology, there are these socks, they have a, a little bit of uh, like, uh, polyester, or they have a little bit of uh, these, these fabrics that actually wick away the moisture, very similar to what wool does. And it wicks away and it pulls away the moisture so your feet don't sweat so much when you're in the socks. That's what all the athletes wear. There are also other types of socks that have a, a little bit of compression or elastic in them to make a, a tighter fit. Because there are, there are problems with socks if they are too loose and also if they're too tight. If they're too loose, what can happen is they can come down and they can bunch inside your shoe and that can be a problem. And if they're too tight, you can tell that because you're going to have lines on your legs. Your legs are going to be having that indentation at the end of the day and that's a sign that the sock is too tight. But there are certain circumstances where people want to wear tight socks. Can you think of what they are? Well, one of the reasons is if someone has a really bad circulation or if they have a lot of swelling. With this swelling, many times your doctor might recommend you wear compression stockings. And these are socks that are you know, really hard to get on for one, but they really help with the, the, the swelling that you have in your foot and your leg. So with, with, your, with the types of socks, with the types of shoes, th that's a, a great way to start for when you're walking. Now we're going to look a little bit about what are some of the concerns that you need to be careful of if you're starting your walking program. The first one I already addressed. You need to be careful if you have diabetes. I'm not saying that diabetics shouldn't walk. I'm not saying that at all. 
But what I'm saying is, if you have diabetes, there can be a, a lot more foot problems that could develop. But what can happen to me? Well, if you don't have any neuropathy, and if you have good circulation or good blood flow, you're probably not going to have any problem. If your shoe's too tight, it could be problematic, it could cause a blister. Um, but there are other types of problems with, with diabetes that can be a problem. The first one would be the neuropathy that I talked about. So if you can't feel, it's very important that you look. If you can't feel, it's very important that you look. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're going to start a walking regimen and you can't feel your toes. You should go for a walk, let's say 5, 10, 15 minutes, and when you come back, you take off your shoes and socks and you make sure that there's no areas of rubbing, no areas of blistering, no areas that, that are going to become problematic. But what happens if you can't really see down there? I know some people have that problem. You know what that problem's called? I call it the Dunlop problem. It's where your belly Dunlops over the belt buckle and you can't see your feet. And that becomes a problem for some people. So what you do is you have one of your loved ones at home take a look at your feet. Or if you can't do that, you can do something real high tech. I kind of like these high tech things. You can take either your phone and turn on the recorder or your iPad or something and you can actually put your foot a little bit away and record, look at, the, look at the bottoms, you can film the top and take a look at it. That's kind of a high tech way of looking at your feet. But regardless what you do, if you have diabetes, it's good to check your feet to make sure there's no blistering. Tops, bottoms, and between the toes. And what do you do if you see something? What do you do if you see a problem with your foot? We're in this time of the epidemic right now. What do you do if you have any problem? Should you just wait, stay at home and wait for it to get better? No. And there's a lot of people that are getting into problems, especially a lot of the, the older, older people, because they don't want to bother anyone right now. But if, if you have a health problem, you need to call your, your primary care doctor. You need to call the senior center. You need to call a, a doctor or go to the emergency room because we don't want you to have other problems that are worse by not getting your foot or your other problems checked out. Don't just sit at home. You should really get some help. Call your loved ones, call, call your children, your grandchildren, ask them to come over and take a look. So with diabetes, the, the first problem is that, is that neuropathy that can affect it. Uh, there are some other problems here that can happen. And one would be problems with your toenails. In, in my business, uh, dealing with feet, that's what a podiatrist does, I see a lot of people that have long, kind of thick toenails, ingrown toenails, and right now no one's coming in. You're not going to any of your doctor's visits. Maybe you're doing a, a telehealth visit where they're calling on the phone. Well, it's really hard for me to trim someone's toenails over the phone. So, it, but that's not a problem. The problem is, is if your toenails get too long, they could get ingrown. Or if you're doing a lot of walking with a shoe that's a little bit too snug, it could cause injury to your toenails. What do I mean by that? Well, your toenail could, could grow in on the side and make kind of swelling and pain. You could also have injury to your toenail where it could have some blood underneath it. We call that like a blood blister underneath the nail. I've even had some people, they do walking and they have neuropathy and their toenail comes right off or they pull it off when they're pulling off their sock and they don't even know it because of the feeling problem. That's why it's so important. If, you, if you're having long nails, have a loved one, have someone try to help you if you can't make it in to see the doctor at this time. Because I find that the toenail problems are, are a big problem. You have to have someone to, someone to help you. And there's another thing that can happen. A lot of people that, as they get older, what happens is you, your fat pad changes, meaning you have less fat in places where you need it and more fat where you don't want it, if you know what I mean. You have less fat on the feet and more fat other places. It just kind of moves around. And that can cause a lot of calluses and, and problems where, where there's a buildup of hard skin. Well, if this hard skin isn't treated and you start doing a lot of walking, what's going to happen is it's going to develop into either a blister or a wound, which we call an ulcer. Basically, it's, a, it's an opening in the skin. And you may not see an opening. You might just see a blood blister, but underneath there, there could be a wound. And this is something, that's why it's, that you need to check out. That's why I asked you, if you start walking, you need to have someone look at your feet, make sure everything is okay, make sure your feet are the right, or your shoes are the right size, that they fit properly to avoid any of these problems. And if you find a problem, have someone help you with it. Because if you have a history, meaning if it's happened before in the past that you've had a blister, that you've had a wound, you have to be very cautious because the biggest risk factor for developing a wound is having a previous one. 
If you've had one before, you're at much greater risk of having one again. And that, that's the same with a lot of health conditions. If you had the problem in the past, if you've had a heart attack in the past, you're at greater risk for having a heart attack in the future. So you have to ha check that out and, and have your feet in, in, inspected, especially if you're going to start this walking regimen. Because we want people to walk. We want people to be active. But we don't want to have any problems that can happen with it. The other thing I want to ma make you aware of is you have to be careful if you have any old shoes or shoes that are too tight. And you, and you might say, well, how do I know if they're too tight? How do I know if they're too old? Well, one thing that I find, let me give, just give you an example. We just went through the whole winter, and now we're into the spring. A lot of shoes that you wore last fall or last summer, if they're a leather type of a shoe, that leather gets hard. And let's say they were broken in, and then you try wearing them in again, you have to break them in again. And that could cause a blister. That could cause a problem. If you've had a shoe that, that maybe is worn out, that there's no traction, that could make it a greater risk for you slipping. So having a, an older shoe can be a problem. A tight shoe can be the same. One thing that I've been finding with a lot of people these days is because no one's going out, what's everyone wearing at home? Either nothing or slippers. A lot of uh, older patients, a lot of seniors, they don't wear shoes at home. Well, there's, there's two issues that can happen with that. First, if you're wearing a slipper at home and it doesn't have any traction, you can slip. The other problem, if you do a lot of walking around in slippers, they don't have any support. And that lack of support can cause more foot problems. It can cause arthritis, it can cause tendinitis, and it can cause other issues that can be problematic for you. And then as I was talking about a shoe being too small, sometimes it's not the shoe that's too small. If you go a long time without wearing shoes, your foot actually expands a little bit. It gets a little more swollen. If you've been sitting around a lot with your feet down and not moving as much, you're probably going to notice that your feet get more swollen. And when they're more swollen, it's going to be hard to fit in the shoes, and that could cause other problems if you're trying to walk. So you have to really be careful that your, your shoe isn't too tight. And you do that by doing a little bit of a walk, coming back, checking everything, making sure that everything is OK for you, because you don't want to cause any problems. The next thing I want to talk about are some of the common problems that can happen that I find with people when they're starting to walk. The biggest problem, not just for seniors, but for anyone when they're doing a lot of walking or doing a lot of running, are, are blisters. Blisters usually caused by rubbing or chafing either between the toes or on the sides or somewhere else on the foot. And you might think, well, blisters are normal. Well, they, they can be normal, especially if you're doing a lot of activity and you're sweating. That's why it's important for the other things that we mentioned. Shoes that are wide enough, but not too wide, not too big, because a, a shoe that's too big is, is going to be just as problematic as a shoe that's too small, because you're going to kind of piston inside there. But also, the blistering, it usually shows up as little red spots first before it blisters. And if that happens, you should stop. You should put a Band-Aid on it. You should have it checked out, because that blister can very easily turn into a wound or a sore. So blisters are the, are the first problem that I see a lot of patients uh, deal with. Another problem that I see with people are toenail injuries or ingrown toenails. These ingrown toenails, they can be a problem because they, they can get infected, they can get inflamed, and you shouldn't just live with it. And just so you know, an ingrown toenail that, that's a little bit red or infected, that's, that's considered an emergency. But why is it an emergency, you might ask? Well, because if that infection isn't treated, it can spread. It can spread up your foot. It can be very problematic. And usually, it's not just an antibiotic that you need. Because if you take an antibiotic, it'll clear up the redness. But when you stop the antibiotic, what's going to happen? The redness is going to start up again. Because it's kind of like having a thorn in your skin. If you don't remove the thorn, if you don't remove the ingrown toenail, that's going to be a problem. The other issues that I see as well are the, are the nails. If they're, if they're too thick or they're too long, they're going to cause the different types of problems that happen to them. And then also, you can see a lot of people, if they're doing a lot of walking, when they're not used to walking, it can cause, not really cause, it can make worse pains of arthritis and tendinitis. Well, why does that happen? Let, let me explain first what, what arthritis is. So, Arthro, it represents the joints, 
and itis is inflammation. So that's what arthritis is. It's, it's inflammation or pain in a joint. Now, if you look at a foot, there's a lot of joints in a foot. And if your foot is usually not doing much activity, it's probably not going to be problematic. But let's say you have an x-ray and you can see a foot with a lot of arthritis in it, and, and that's what a lot of my, my senior patients have, and then they start doing a lot of walking. Well, what's going to happen? You're moving all of these joints, and you have arthritis already, it's going to make it more painful. That's why I recommend a shoe that's supportive for you if you're doing walking. Because if you do a lot of walking, I always use my hand to explain the foot. If you're doing a lot of walking and you have support, the joints aren't going to move as much. But if you don't have any support in your shoe and it's very flat, they're going to move a lot more. That's why a shoe that's very supportive is going to be important for you depending on your foot type. So the arthritis. Another thing that can happen is something called tendonitis. Let's say your joints are fine. You could get tendonitis. Once again, a tendon and then there's inflammation of that tendon. The most common tendon that can get inflamed is in the back of the heel region. It's called the Achilles tendon. It's basically this tendon right back here. The Achilles tendon, if you're doing a lot of walking, especially if you're going up hills, it pulls more on the Achilles and it can become inflamed or painful or have tendonitis in the back of the heel. Another problem that can happen that's very, very common, I don't see it as much in seniors, but it's called plantar fasciitis. The plantar fascia, though, isn't, isn't a tendon. It's, it's more like a ligament, but it has uh, very similar uh, problems that can happen to tendons. And basically, if you develop tendonitis or, or pain in your foot, you might not be sure what it is. The first thing I recommend people do is rest. Maybe if you can, if your doctor will allow you to take an anti-inflammatory, put ice on it. But resting is the most important thing. Rest it a little bit and then go back to walking. But then if, if the walking makes it worse, you should really see your doctor. You should see what's going on. Is it the shoe? Do you need an insert in your shoe? Is it how much you're doing? There's a, there's a lot of other questions that can happen when you're getting in your walking routine. So this tendonitis and um, arthritis can happen. Now, if you start, let's say you're moving really good and you're, and you're walking, let's say before you were walking once a week and now you're walking every day and you're walking, you're enjoying it and then all of a sudden one day your foot really starts to hurt in the front of the foot. What, a lot of times what happens for my patients when they build up too quickly is that they develop something called a stress fracture. Now, a real fracture is where you maybe you fall and you break, you've heard of people breaking an arm or breaking a hip. But a stress fracture is from all that continual stress when you're walking, it can build up swelling inside of the bone and cause a little bit of a break. That's very common for people that increase their activity very rapidly. Or they increase their activity with a shoe that doesn't have as much cushion. So be aware, if your foot's hurting and, and you have some type of symptoms with swelling and pain every time you're walking, you should uh, ask your doctor, see your doctor and see what they have to say. Now I'm going to give you a couple of tips for, for safety. When you're outside walking, I always think it's important to walk either on the sidewalk or you should walk facing traffic. Uh, you have to be really careful though if you're in the road, if you can get out of the road if there's a problem, but walk, uh, facing tra or walk on a sidewalk is important and make sure it's a place that is well lit so you can see if there's any variations in a lot of the sidewalks. There can be problems that can, that can be caused. You also want to avoid walking in the dark where you can't see because that could cause problems with falls. And you also want to make sure when you go, if you're, if you're with someone, that's ideal. But if you're not with anyone, carry some type of a communication device with you. Maybe carry a cell phone with you. That's probably a good idea. But one word of caution. I see a lot of people that get injured, not because they're carrying the cell phone, but it's because they're looking at the cell phone when they're trying to walk. You shouldn't try to walk and look at the cell phone because you're going to fall, you're going to hurt yourself, you're not going to pay attention, there's going to be a problem. So if you need to use your phone, I would stop, look at it, and then start going again. So those are some, some safety tips for you. What I want to tell you now, or I'll give you some tips here about a walking plan. And what you can see in this slide, are there, are there are some tips for you. The first tip is I would say start slow and then build yourself up. If you're already not a walker, you need to start slow and build yourself up. I think that's good for two reasons. Because if people start something too quickly, they tend to get 
frustrated when they get injured, when they don't do well. So I find doing little incremental steps. So let's say you don't walk at all right now. What you could do is go for a five minute walk around the block. The next day, do another five minutes around the block. And then each day, maybe build it up. Each week, build it up five minutes or 10 minutes. So start slow and then build yourself up. As I mentioned before, I'd like you to check your feet after you walk. And check other things too. If, if your other muscles hurt, you should talk to your doctor. If there's other problems that happen when you're walking, you should get that checked out. And then a few other tips for those that are still working. You may want to consider during your break time at work to go for a little walk. Let's say you get a half hour or you eat lunch. You have your lunch time and then go for a walk after you eat lunch. Another thing is after dinner, then go for a little walk. I, I think it's very important to do a, a technique. You may have heard of it. It's called habit stacking. I mean, what's, a, what's a habit stack? Well, it's easier to start a new habit when you stack it with something that you're already doing. So let me give you an example. I think all of us, when we, when we brush our teeth, we floss, right? We stack those two together. It would be much harder to brush your teeth and then floss another time. That's why you stack them. And so what I, what I recommend to a lot of people that are wanting to start walking, think of something that you do every day. Maybe you eat breakfast every day. Maybe you eat lunch every day. Maybe you eat dinner every day. So you can decide, okay, after I eat lunch, I'm gonna go for a walk, then I'm gonna wash the dishes. Or after I eat dinner, then I'm gonna go for a walk, and then I'll do something else. It's always good to stack one habit on top of another. I think that's a very good tip. And then also, if you are at work, I would recommend you would consider using the elevator, in, I'm sorry, not using the elevator, and then take the stairs. There's a lot of opportunities we have for little opportunities to walk. And walking doesn't need to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, all at once. What I would say is you get up, you can go for a little walk. At lunch, go for a little walk until you build yourself up. You go to a place that has an elevator and you say, you know, I'm, today I'm going to take the stairs. You make these little changes into good habits, stacking them on things that you already do, and it makes it a lot easier. And what you're going to see here on this last slide is something called a shoe buyer's guide. I get this question all the time, doctor, what type of shoe should I wear? And, and there's a lot of shoes out there. My, my best recommendation is actually to go to a shoe store that are, that are professionals and ask for their opinion. They should have you take off your shoes. They should watch you walk. They should show an appropriate shoe for you. A good test is to wear one shoe on one foot and one shoe on the other foot to see how it feels. But if you need other recommendations, there's a special guide that I put together for those that want more information about fitting and getting shoes properly. There's this little code. Uh, if you're watching this, you might not even know what this code is, but this is called a QR code. And what you do is you take your cell phone and you get close enough and you take a picture of it or there's a QR code reader and then it'll, it'll pop up a, a document. And you can look at that document and it has everything written there. I put a lot of recommendations for different shoes that I give my patients because everyone doesn't know, oh, what, what shoe is good for having a wide foot? What shoe is good if I want to have a more stable foot? Well, what's a good dress shoe for a man? What's a good dress shoe for a woman? And I kind of put those all together so that you might find that helpful. Once again, I wish you gr great success with the new walking club here at Worcester Senior Center, and I appreciate this opportunity to talk with you all.